Look, there are real reasons why your blog's not really working yet. And to prepare for this video, we asked for your input and got thousands of responses. Let's talk about it. So the first reason is very common, and that is that you haven't picked a niche yet. You don't think you know anything. Maybe you have too many domains. That's what I've heard a lot of times. And we have some processes for you to be able to do this really quickly. It's hard to have a successful blog if you never <laughs> get started. But I've literally talked yeah. to people who are like, I have like 100 domains and I've owned them for 10 years and I just can't start one. Really, there's a formula for what makes for a good niche. and. It's only a few things. The first one is you have to have at least some level of interest in the topic. There are a few exceptions. I'd say if you're an experienced blogger who just loves the process of building blogs, right? And it's kind of like you're an investor in blogs, then okay, you know, you're doing it passively, no big deal. You probably don't have to have any interest in the topic. That's like less than 1% of you. <laughs> the rest of you should have some interest. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to like want to learn more about the topic and that's gonna be enough to carry you through. So the next one is having some sort of information gap within your niche that you're looking at. So back to what Ricky was saying, I am working on cookforfolks.com, our blog, and before that I had a lot of interest in cooking and food, <laughs> but I didn't necessarily dream about you know writing for large groups and about catering, but because I do have that interest in the main topic, I'm interested mm -hmm. in, in it all. So you do need to look for gaps, you know, where people haven't covered the certain topics. So for example, last week I published an article called how many sugar cookies per person. You would think that'd be covered everywhere, right? But now this week it's actually ranking number one for how many sugar cookies for a crowd. It's already gone up to the top and that's because that particular search query was not covered. There was a lot of recipes, but those recipes did not answer that particular question. Yeah, so with information gaps, as long as you can identify a few when you're looking at a niche, like are there a few gaps of information? Most people are gonna look at it and say, no, are you kidding me? Cooking, that's like super crowded. Well, recipes is super crowded, but even there, are there maybe like some types of food where <clears throat> There aren't that many recipe blockers, maybe certain ethnic mm -hmm. foods, um, probably. But if you're into cooking, like let's look mm -hmm. for information gaps elsewhere. We've picked that niche of cooking for large groups. Mm -hmm. And so like how many sugar cookie recipes are there on the web? Probably hundreds. Mm -hmm. And what percentage of all the searches do each of those get? Well, most of them get less than 1%. A couple of them that rank really high get a high percentage. But what percentage of people who are cooking sugar cookies and searching the web for information also are trying to figure out about how many they should make for the number of people that are there? And so we get like all of those searches <laughs> because we cover that information gap that other people weren't covering. Look for a few of those and if you find them, you're probably in a pretty good niche. Okay, and so the next criterion for a good niche is just what is the quality of the competitive content? Now, when we talk about competitive content, we're talking about when I do those searches um, that are the types of things I'm gonna cover, what does the competition generally look like? Again, in recipes, you're gonna find there are a handful of websites that just like, if they have a recipe for it, sorry, it's ranking number one. And that's really the case in most industries. There are a few websites where if they have an article on that topic, they're probably gonna win it. They're just very well known, and so their authority is well established, even if their content's not that good. However, you may also find that there are numerous other bloggers who have written on the same topic. So we're not talking about just the quantity of competition. Let's actually look at the content. How good is the blog post really? Like, do they have good original research? Have they, do they have unique thought put into it? Or are they just kind of like spouting off a few things? I find so many blog posts that like barely even answer the main mm -hmm. question. They just like go off on tangents and tell stories. And in the end you're like, well that didn't help me at all. Right. One more really cool thing, by the way, if you get like one of these big websites that tends to rank number one, but nothing else does that well, well guess what happens when people go to one of those websites and find the content is pretty thin? They tend to click on the next thing down, right? Um, and so, if you find that there are big websites dominating in that industry but their content's not that great, and you can rank just below them, people will still come to your content because they're not gonna find what they're looking for in the first articles. The second one is actually one of the biggest things in blogging, 
And, and that is just, you get maybe even paralyzed or you're trying and failing at identifying just what are those topics I can write about that are actually going to bring in real traffic to my website. We have a process for this. It's called search analysis where we identify the right topics to write about in your niche that are going to drive traffic to your website. But it's way too much to talk about as a segment in this video. So a couple weeks ago, we put out a video that outlines our entire process for starting a blog and carrying it all the way through to earning a full-time income. And in that video, we'll go into more detail about search analysis. And so we're going to invite you to watch that video. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description and we'll mention it again at the end. The next one is a really big one and that is you just can't find time or motivation. Now, the best way to approach this is one thing at a time, baby steps, right? Yes. <laughs> Instead of looking at this big, huge project and your end goal, taking it day by day, week by week, what do you want to accomplish and what can you literally check off? So not really thinking about you know what's going to come out of it, but what can you put into it and what are you going to get done that week? Uh, it's it's brilliant the baby steps concept <laughs> the movie what about bob i'm sorry it's a classic but really like when we set goals we should start off in the beginning setting goals that are based upon what we do not what the results that come of it don't set a goal for how much traffic you're going to get this month or how many dollars you're going to make set a goal for how much content you're going to write and if you do that then you can actually have full control over whether or not you achieve that goal and part of this is people think they have to have all this discipline and grit to do all these projects, but really it's, you know what, it's becoming a habit. So yes, you do have to have a little bit of discipline in the beginning to start that habit, but once you get it going, it's just what you do. It's like a lot like going to the gym, right? Who wants to go to the gym when they haven't gone to the gym in a long time? Nobody, right? But you just go, you put on mm -hmm. your shoes, and then after a couple of weeks, it's just part of your daily habit. The next one is you don't like writing. <laughs> now, the easy answer I could give you is, well, maybe you shouldn't be a blogger then. But I don't think that's right mm -hmm. because uh, you, you feel like you don't like writing, but it's almost certainly caused by one of two things. The first one is you're just not that great at writing yet. And the second one is you haven't done a lot of writing. You don't, you're not super experienced with it. And so it just doesn't come naturally. It doesn't feel natural. And if we can overcome those two things, there's actually a pretty good chance that you'll enjoy at least some aspects of writing. So let's touch on the first one real quick. The first thing you need to do is completely change your mindset about writing. You do not have to be a expert writer to do good at blogging. Being able to write and like put thoughts out is, is pretty well sufficient. Right. And the reality is, is for any blogger, if you don't look back at your content from six months ago and cringe a little bit, then you're not, getting better. And so we should cringe at some of the content we wrote a little while ago. And if you're brand new, you might be looking at the content you wrote one month ago and cringing, and that's okay. Leave the content alone, publish it anyway, get it out there, and after it's been out there for about a year, we're going to see how it performed, and we have a whole process, a whole method for what we do with that content after it's been out there for a while. It actually may be that it performed just fine and we're going to leave it alone, even though when you read it, you're like, oh, I could do so much better today. That's a good sign. It means you're improving and you will do that the more you practice. And then along with that, we want you to get some experience. So we would like you to write at least 30 articles before you make any judgments about your writing about your niche in particular, as long as you have some interest in it, right? Right. But write those 30 articles and yes, don't judge them and look back. But once you do that, you're going to probably feel a lot more confident in the process, in your writing skills, and then just be more knowledgeable in your niche in general. And so we really want people to do that before they go on and change their mind about anything else. That is really key. Um, if after you've written 30 articles, you're still saying, oh my gosh, every time I have to go write, this is just miserable and I hate it and I don't ever want to do it again. Then you might be one of that like small group of people, like less than 1% of you, who really just is never going to enjoy writing. If that's the case, there are other mediums that you can use. If you still like this concept of internet marketing, YouTube is just an excellent place to go. It's actually just a huge opportunity right now for internet marketing. I would encourage you to consider that option. You may find you really enjoy making videos. 
Likewise, podcasting is just still an awesome medium. It doesn't quite have the same spreadability factor, but it totally can be done and you can shift your focus and attention in that direction if that's what you wanna do. So I really do think you probably do like writing. You probably <laughs> like a lot of things. I like a lot of things. You like this video or you should, if you do, you should click the like button. Yes, so the next one is really, really common and that's just, you're afraid it's going to fail. And if it does fail, you're afraid of what your loved ones might think, right? Your partner, your family, your friends. And then also, what if it doesn't work? You don't have a plan B, or maybe you're really relying this to work for your financial situation. And that's a tough place to be in, we get it. But if you're already telling yourself those stories, if you're being super critical of yourself and the process, you're really already setting yourself up to fail. You really need to have a positive mindset and amp yourself up almost because that's when you're gonna have the best chance for success. There may be some of you who actually are experiencing critical voices, people who are saying, really, you're putting time into blogging and hoping to make money at that? Isn't that kind of just like a moonshot? Like, the, it, this doesn't happen for normal people. It certainly doesn't happen for people like you and me. Well, guess what? I'm a person like you and it, it works. It works for me. We have a repeatable process that's working for thousands of people who have followed these processes, many of whom are earning well over $1,000 a month and several of whom are replacing their full-time income. Many have been able to leave their full-time jobs and are earning more money doing the things that they love, not having to worry all the time about punching a clock and going in and getting a job. So here's what it takes to make that happen. We have to shut off those voices, some of them that are real, most of them that are probably not. They're the stories we tell ourselves. We need to change those stories and say, you know what? I am the kind of person who succeeds because I'm disciplined enough to create one habit at a time that's gonna lead me towards success. I can do that. You have to have a little bit of confidence in yourself and you need to have confidence in the process. And with that, you're gonna be determined enough to make this happen. Now, if you are one of those few people who says, okay, but I need the money and I need it now and I need it to be long-term. Well, the best way to do that is to continue working on your content business right now, but just know that the income from it is not going to come immediately. The beautiful thing about it is I write a blog post today and that blog post can earn me an income for years, but probably not quite yet, not when you're first getting started. So you may have to find some sort of other side hustle or just a job, a part-time job, something to help bridge that gap. If you're in the US, fast food restaurants are hiring like crazy because they can't <laughs> get enough workers and they're paying at least $15 an hour, even where we live in Idaho. Find a side hustle. I get it, not everywhere in the world is the same, but you can, you live somewhere cold, shovels people's snow. Yep. You live somewhere warm, go mow people's lawns. Find a way to make enough income to survive on for now while you work on your content business. It's gonna pay off and when it does, you're gonna be able to calm down, sit back, stop mowing lawns and shoveling <laughs> sidewalk and flipping burgers and you're gonna be able to enjoy the life that you want to have and have that steady income going forward. So with all that said, we have an amazing process that has helped many of our followers grow their business beyond what they thought was possible. And we have an amazing video for you to show you all that. All you have to do is click the video right up there.